dirt face. Not good, but whatever. Hey, YouTube, it's, this is Gunner again. Uh, if you notice that I've been talking a little weird, I've, I've woken up and uh, I have a bit of a stuffy nose. Well, well that'll go away in, later in the day, so. No matter. Anyways, when I was, I, like, after, like, a few days, after, two days after I got home, I was, I was checking up the inbox, looking up, um, I guess, I guess to look up whatever comments there are, I guess, whatever. And then, and then, yeah, then I saw on, then I saw on the Sweetie Belle video that, that I got one. Uh, good for me. Hold on. Yeah, the comment is the comment is from Lookman thirty seven thirty one. And the comment reads No you can't afford an H D camera. JK. Then I replied, <laughs> first comment that is not from Super 5. Eh, what do you do when you live in a piss poor town? Which is kind of true, but I, I think, I think the Walmart here is pretty much screwing up, screwing up the town's economy. Then he replied again, like two hours ago, and he says, you get a job and get out, get out of it, but I live in a piss poor I live in a poor town, Round Rock, Texas. The house near us is worth like two hundred fifty thousand, and some in the nine hundred thousand range. But good, but good HD cameras are cheap now. And then, and then about a minute ago, I replied this: First off, I'll try. Second off, damn. Lastly, nice. Uh, I don't know if I. Should I don't know if I will get another webcam, but but since the the webcam on my computer is like is like built in, so so at least I'll try that, try that for the time being. And then I got another another comment, which my my friend Braden from Arkansas had sent over to me, but but I'll tell you that on a later day. So all right, now let's. Now let's get this story on the road. Alright. Spike's Curiosity. Chapter 3. Scootaloo. Spike awoke once again refreshed and ready to tackle on the new day. New day. This morning he had woken up earlier this than usual. The sun was beginning to rise and apparently the, the weather crew planned for an overcast this morning. Spike awoke merrily and easily, and with the and with the spring in his step, he skipped skipped joyfully downstairs. Today was just one of those days. The young dragon spotted a purple unicorn from the stair staircase, seeing his roommate passed passed out on her desk, peacefully sleeping. Spike carefully crept up, crept past towards the kitchen, trying not to wake the unicorn for. From her much needed rest. He made his usual breakfast happily, finishing off his sandwich and some peanut butter and adding some extra gems for today. He munched down on his breakfast, looking at Twilight's mess. Damn, Twilight, you need to go to bed. Seriously. Oh, Celestia, what a mess. Spike thought as he looked at Twilight's late night study materials laid out all over the floor of books. The books, schools, and parchment cluttering the living room. He, de he decided that he would clean up after her today as sort of an apology and try to line up the move between him and his sister. He quietly walked over towards Twilight's mess and began to put it in place. After sorting her books and papers, Spike went over to dust the shelves and wipe the book, wipe the windows. Spike could help but uh, make noise as he dusted Twilight's belongings and wakened her. Sp Spike? 
Polly asked wearily, rubbing her eyes, gazing at him. Good morning, he grated, con con continuing his cleaning. Twilight looked around, noticing noticing his kind efforts and gently smiled. Spike, are you cleaning? Twilight asked with a grin on her face. Spike turned and smiled, conti continuing dusting diligently. Spike, you really are my number one assistant. She complimented him warmly, steadily working towards the kitchen to grab some breakfast. It's nothing really. Spike said, scratching his head with a small smile. You know what, Spike? You've earned a day off today. Twilight said, biting into a decent sandwich. Really? Yep, I'm going with Rarity today to do some window shopping. So, so you have the house to yourself, she added. As she levitated the, the meal, biting it. Fighting into it from the kitchen. Wow, thanks, Twilight. Spike said, putting down the duster and thanking her contently. You're very welcome, Spike. You've earned it. Twilight said as she grabbed her saddlebags and trod, trod towards the door. I'll be back by tonight, and oh, happy Sunday, Spike. Sunday, bloody Sunday. <laughs> Somehow I thought of that, and yeah, and I don't really like YouTube, YouTube that much. Twilight said, closing the door and leaving Spike alone. Spike dropped a smile, a blank, of, blank expression on his face as he was left with his thoughts. Hmm. Hmm. Now what? Spike took his seat and pondered. Thinking, thinking about what he could do, Spike remembered about yesterday's encounters, encounter with Twilight's books and decided to go have a look at them. He made, he made his way towards the basement, down the stairs, and through, through the door to find that the book had just, has just where he had left it. He grabbed the pink book and scanned, and scanned the pages, seeing if there was anything new that he hadn't seen before. Spike flipped to a page reading anal sex, looking further into detail. Oh no. Oh no, he's going up. He's taking a brown town. Spike, Spike winced as he read on in the, in the passage explaining the new concept to him. His passions will show you to properly please your mare towards the back entrance. While her mare hood is nice, sometimes some mares just want it rough. Spike read on about the passage in disbelief. What? Some pony would actually want to do it down there? Spike read on about, about the different experiences of past stallions and how it could feel pleasuring for the mare as well as the stallion. Asto astounded, Spike read on, the, read on practically studying the passage, passages intrigued by the new concept of anal. After a couple minutes of reading the book, Spike decided that he was going he was going to do today. With a devious smile, with the for, with the first time he wanted to try something like this on his own, today today Spike was determined to try this anal sex. Spike closed the book and carefully placed it back where he had, where it had been, leaving leaving behind no evidence of his snooping. Spike walked upstairs toward the living room and, and to grab the glass of water before he went he went on his way to find some pony willing to try his new discovery. Finishing the glass of the cold crust drink, Spike took off to fulfill his newfound horniness. Spike left the library thinking of where he could possibly find some pony that would relieve him. Hmm, well I can ask an adult mare, so I guess I can try the schoolhouse. <laughs> Why are you trying to find an adult mare? You're way too young for this. And honestly, you should you should put down the cane, Big Daddy Spike. With that, he took off into the direction of the schoolhouse. The nice morning was now settling onto early noon as the sun draped over draped through the clouds, making a one making a wonderful overcast. Spike arrived at the at the school only to see that class classes were over and every pony was gone. As he came closer, he noticed an orange filly standing alone in the playground. Scootaloo. 
Spike recognized the feeling from Apple Bloom's friends and and recalls, and recalls that she was the singer of the, the talent competition a few weeks back. Spike stood there watching Skittle as she ran back and forth blinking onto the air. He saw her numerous attempts flapping her wings hard at earth a little time little time in the air before falling back down again with a thud. Spike watched as the rather athletic filly repeated the process over and over again, determined to fly. Seriously, she needs to learn how to fly. That would be so cool. Man, I wish I could see that though. But this is the real world. <coughs> Again, Spike felt the same sensation return. Now familiar with it, Spike found found himself staring at the little filly's tone flank and her kinky short violet mane. Spike stopped his peeping as he saw Scootaloo fall one last time, seizing further attempts, sitting down and sobbing in the grass. Spike walked up to her, taking the taking the seat next to the filly. Hey Scootaloo, are you okay? Spike asked as Scootaloo stopped, stopped into her forelegs. Oh, Spike, what are you doing here? Scootaloo asked, trying to hide her tears. I was just walking by and I noticed you're crying. What's wrong? What's wrong? Nothing is wrong. Everything is fine here. Scootaloo responded with a forced smile that didn't last long before she turned her face, hiding, hiding her inevitable sob. Come on, Scootaloo. I'm your friend. You can tell me. Spike said, putting a claw to her shoulder. Scootaloo sniffed, turning back to the carrying dragon. Well... It's just that I can't fly. Scootaloo confesses she once turned again turned. Is that it? Come on. You, you really think you can't fly? Spike ch challenge trying to motivate the young Philly. It's true. I can't fly. I'm just a. I'm just a. Scootaloo turned her face back away from the dragon hiding her sorrowful face. I'm just a chicken. Scootaloo said, pouting. That's actually pretty sad. Don't say that, Scootaloo. You can fly. Heck, I know you can fly. <coughs> you, you really think so? Scootaloo said, facing him with the bubbly, bubbliest eyes. Spike smiled, and he got to his feet, landing, landing a claw over to her for her to do the same. Come on, give it another try. Spike said, lifting the up to her feet encouragingly. Wiping away her tears and slightly puffing out her chest, the young filly spread her wings wide. Yeah, you're right. I can do this. Scootaloo exclaimed as she actually took a couple of steps back and prepared for a lift off. With a surge of energy, Scootaloo galloped swiftly, running running across the, the white grass playground, preparing for a gallop. Scootaloo turned her jump and as she floated into the air with great athleticism. Mid-air, Scootaloo spread her wings wide and began to flap them as quickly as, and as hard as she could. Scootaloo, Scootaloo's brain stopped as every, everything seemed to move slowly as she began to think. Oh no, not again. I'm falling. Scootaloo's mind braced at the idea of her fall as she flapped her wings harder and harder. Scootaloo closed her eyes, awaiting impact. The fall was taking an awfully long time to complete when she realized, Hey, I'm flying! I'm flying! Scootaloo felt the great burst of joy rocked out of her body as she screamed. Woohoo! Yeah, I'm flying! Spike smiled as the Philly Pegasus flew for the first time. I knew you could do it, Scootaloo! Spike yelled in excitement, watching happily as the excited Pegasus soared, soared across the sky. Twirling in the air with joy. Scootaloo's eyes were tearing with the allevi alleviation as, sh as she flew to her heart's content. Feeling the cold air rush past her mane and coat and appreciating the embrace feeling of the sky. After a short while, Scootaloo landed back, finally landed back on the playground, folding her wings as she, as she smiled and embraced Spike in an excited hug. Thanks, Spike. I couldn't have done it without you. Scootaloo said, breaking their their embrace with cheeks cheeks of rose. 
Uh, that's nothing really. Spike said, I'm totally shifting his feet. No, really, Spike, thank you so much. Is there anything I can do to thank you? Well, there is one thing, but you can't tell anybody about it, okay? Yeah, if you say to anybody instead of any pony. Oh, and, oh, and what's happening right here? Okay, Spike, what is it? So, as after Spike took a seat down on the grass to explain to her about his sexual, encounter, sexual encounters and findings. What? What? Scoodle said with her, with her cheeks as crimson as ever. That's crazy, Spike. No pony would do that. It's true. I read it in one of the, one of Twilight's books, Spike protested. Besides, Big Macintosh told me that, that it was for adults only. That's probably why you haven't heard of it, Spike inquired as he finished explaining the situation. Wait, what's this all about, Spike? So, well, it's just that I sort of wanted to try that with you. Spike said sheepishly as he shuffled his feet about. I don't know, Spike. Are you sure it's okay? Scoodle hesitated. The strange concept not coming easily to her. It's completely safe. I've done it before. Hmm. You did help me to fly, so I guess I'll do it. Scoodle agreed, looking at the dragon's rising member. Ding! Yay, ball attacks. Spike, Spike motioned Scootaloo to her back, to her back as she shyly open, opened her haunches, revealing her filly flower. Spike grew more and more excited, but he, but held his agitation and and knew that eating eating her out first would ease her nervousness. Spike began kneeling down into the grass, placing placing his lips gently on the filly's inviting petals. As he as he slowly started mopping mopping his tongue on Scootaloo's most sensitive areas, moans filled the the open pasture of the empty school grounds as Spike increased his pace, making sure that his tongue completely twirled around Scootaloo's inner walls as he serviced the mirror properly. Scootaloo was at a loss for words. She felt the weird sensation trickle up her spine as Spike mopped around her uh, and her shit and in her private areas. Her cheeks were red as she moaned and yelled at Spike's overwhelmingly gestures. Spike heard the now familiar plea to continue as he doubled, doubled his efforts to hard and quick movements, driving Scootaloo insane as her feminine juices secreted into his muzzle. Scootaloo screamed and moaned and started to excite Spike. Looking, looking down to his own private regions, he noticed that he is well above aroused. Spike stopped his motions, leaving Scootaloo with an unsatisfied look. Spike, don't stop, So said with a childish face. The face. Spike simply laid himself down next to her, motioning for her to approach, approach her conscious near, her, near his mouth. Sulu awkwardly reared, reared herself towards Spike's muzzle, as he saw her turn her head back in confusion. Aren't you gonna go? Sulu said as Spike gave a compromising look. Mm, the 69. Thank you. You go, then I go," Spike said as Scootaloo complied and turned, turned her head towards the dragon's hard direction. She looked at it with a puzzled look, nudging it with her with a hoof before giving it an experimental lick. Spike moaned at the touch of the filly's warm wet mouth, imploring her to keep going. Scootaloo then, then began to look, look from the from the base of the shaft up to the tip, earning more moans from Spike as she lick, licked Spike's chicken. Yeah, I'm still gonna say chicken. Screw you. Scoodle stopped and turned, turned her head, her to Spike. Come on, Spike. What about me? Scoodle pleaded, giving Spike her most persuading look. Oh, right. Spike said dumbly as he began to grab the mirror by the flanks, embedding his tongue and set the mirror's tight wet snatch. <laughs> oh, jeez. Scootaloo moaned loudly, beginning to serve a spike as well as she began to put her mouth inside his full leg. Now bobbing her head, head engulfed his, his members, Scootaloo worked her head at a modest pace, taking Spike all, 
all the way down the shaft and back up again. Rapid, rapid hair wet fully, wet one fully lips around Spike's cock. Spike, meanwhile, was surfacing scootily as well, digging deep with the tongue and nibbling it on her little clit. Scootily began rocking her hips harder to Spike, oblivious to care of whoever may see. S Spike's pace grew faster and faster as he licked circles and set the mare's soap slit. While the school was 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 well beginning to work, Spike faster, burying her face between his haunches, taking taking in his full length. It wasn't long before they were both close to their climax. Both being overwhelmed by the enticing feelings they were experiencing, Scootaloo was the first to reach her peak as, as she thrust her flanks into Spike's muzzle, and her wings sprang high into the air as she screamed, draping his face with her hot frilly juices. Scootaloo released herself from Spike as he, as he too reached his orgasm, gripping the grass as he shot rubs of dragon, dragon semen into the filly's face. Scootaloo rolled off of him as the two laid there breathlessly in the aftermath of their climax. After a short while, Scootaloo turned to Spike. Wow, Spike, that was awesome! Scootaloo exclaimed. That's just a half of it. You mean there's more? Scootaloo asked excitedly, ready for what Spike had to offer. Mm -hmm. Yay, we're now going to the anal port. Spike smiled at Scootaloo's naivety as he got up, got up with a still wrecked shaft, looking at Scootaloo's exposed and wet slit, inviting him to enter her once more. Spike then looked at the at the mirror's other hole. He wasn't sure if she liked the idea of doing it down there, but it'd be safe he'd start with the with the other one first. Spike drew nearer and held held Scootaloo by her hind legs, preparing his chicken for a decent bashing. Scootaloo looked at him with a weird, weird, weird face, asking, asking him the all too familiar question. Are you sure it's okay? Scootaloo, it'll be fine, I promise. Scootaloo said, advancing, advancing the tip, tip of his penis closer to the really sensitive petals. Scootaloo gave a short squeak as Spike's tips, tip touched her lips. I did it up and down bef before shifting it snugly inside of her. Spike's long, hard chicken drifted smoothly by the mare's tight, white kitty cat as he felt the great sensation of her walls clenching around, around the, sh the shaft. Spike groaned as he, as he grabbed her hind legs closer to further fashion his motions. Scootaloo's wings sprang up as her body gave up in the, in the amazing sensations, laying her head down and letting Spike do the work. Spike continued his pace, noticing the well-known red fluid slinging out of her slit. Scootaloo noticed, but she didn't care, continuing to rock her hips, unsatisfied with, unsatisfied with Spike's pace. Go harder, Spike! Scootaloo commanded as she looked at him with a displeased look. Spike was... Spike took initiative and thrust harder into, into her slamming his balls against his, her bare ass. As he, as he persisted, as he persisted to rut her, Scootaloo let out a long moan and clenched the grass as she felt Spike's shaft penetrate her insides with satisfying slapping noises. Harder, Spike, go faster! Scootaloo yelled. Spike. Spike had only had sex twice, but never had any pony wanted it this bad. Spike smiled at her eagerness as he doubled his efforts, putting 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 his whole body into her, piercing suddenly with relentless stress as he fucked her continuously. Yes, yes, the running has been doubled. Scootaloo shrieked in joy as the dragon pleasantly fucked her hard, drawing her nearer nearer into her second orgasm. Spike heard her sudden shrieks and knew she was coming close. Making sure that he wouldn't go unsatisfied, Spike fucked Scootaloo faster and joyful shrieks and made it from Scootaloo. Ah! Scootaloo wailed in bliss as she 
came all over the dragon's nether regions, covering them in streams of feminine juices. Spike pulled out of her, tired, of, tired as he fell back onto his bottom, panting and sweating. Even though Wolf Fox Scootaloo at, her, at his side. Scootaloo, however, was, was lost for words. As she lay there breathlessly, panting and staring at, at the sky in ecstasy, Spike sat there looking at Scootaloo at his still part erection. This has never happened before. He sat, he sat there with a frown as the sudden realization hit, hit him. He was unsatisfied. Only, only on other occasions that this, this would have gotten him off. But now Spike was sitting there with a still part member and looking once again at Scootaloo's rear end. Hey Scootaloo, Spike. Yeah. Scootaloo said she got got up from her back, beating at Spike. You want? You wouldn't mind if I tried one more thing with you, right? Spike asked with a dumb smile on his face. Sure, Spike. This feels radical. Scootaloo exclaimed as she turned, presenting himself to Spike. Spike looked at the village room, and he, as, as a properly fucked backside, was seeking with the mixed juices. He came nearer to Scootaloo, uh, who was impending, impending, uh, impending on him to enter her. Scootaloo was caught by the surprise, however, when Spike slipped the tip of his chicken duck towards Scootaloo's anus, drawing the, the sharp squeals he took in his sudden leg. Spike slowly entered Scootaloo, unfamiliar with the sensation of Scootaloo's tight anus gripping his shaft. Scootaloo let out a yelp as Spike increased, the, increased his pace, surely, slowly but surely, screwing her balls deep. Scootaloo bit her tongue her tongue as she felt the uh, the only sensual feeling of Spike's erection filling up her rear end. Spike was in ecstasy as the Philly's firm in this class his length in a hot, delightful manner. Spike began to thrust harder, eliciting eliciting a moan from Sulu, who was burying her face in the grass and raising raising her flight higher into the air, begging for Spike to continue. Scootaloo's moans grew louder for every thrust that Spike was performing, feeling her vagina moistening with her with the juices. Rump me, rump me, Spike, harder. Scootaloo wailed as she as she thrust her hips back towards Spike for added pleasure. Spike was not the type to argue, but he obliged to Scootaloo's request, request fucking her harder and smack, smacking the Philly's flanks over so often. Earning an, an approving moan from Sulu, Spike's new experience was was throwing him over the edge. With every thrust feeling his his climax come closer as he began to sweat and sink with the Philly with the Philly. With one funnel thrust, Spike unloaded his cargo of semen, pulling out and shooting streaks after streaks, leaving a mess on the Philly's flanks. The warm sensation of Spike's ejac ejaculate Shooting, shooting in, into her flanks was too much. As she, as she too squirted her natural lubricant onto Spike's haunches, leaving a mess of the two as they fell back and panted. The two laid laid onto their backs as they as the afternoon settled into sunset. As the two lovers gazed upon the apricot sun, admiring the lust of this bright and beautiful star, they both turned to one another and skittily embraced Spike into a warm and fuzzy hug. They both closed their eyes entirely and Spike and Scootaloo cuddled each, each other to sleep under, under the settled equestrian sun and dove into the deep slumber. What the hell was that? Well, alrighty then. Here's the last of the shit. Spike awoke briefly as he stood, stared into the Ponyville night. A bed of stars lit the sky as he raised, raised his head to fami familiar himself with his surroundings. The vast grass on the schoolhouse, schoolhouse playground surrounded him, along with the deep sleeping Scootaloo who was in fact snoring with no intention of getting up. Spike carefully released himself from Scootaloo's embrace as he got to his feet. Oh no, it's late! Spike. Spike panicked as he realized the time. Twilight is probably back by now. Spike thought as he ran back towards the library, awaiting, awaiting his inevitable scolding. 
Spike stood inches away from, from the front door, thinking, thinking all about the harsh things she would say. Okay, Spike, you can do this. He's all, he told himself putting the call to the door as he slowly opened it, revealing it, revealing an empty dark room. He carefully walked inside and heard her steps up, upstairs and upstairs on an open door. Spike? Twilight said she came downstairs with blurry vision. Twilight, Twilight levitated a lit lantern as she came downstairs with the front of her face. Spike, it's late. Sorry, Twilight, but I was a. Uh, he said, trying, trying to notice. Thought to just search for an excuse. Spike, where were you? She said firmly. I was playing with Scootaloo. Spike said. Spike said, dumbly putting a sentence together. Playing? Spike said. You spent the whole day playing? With the tone grown irritant. Yeah, me and school were playing at the school, and then I got tired and fell asleep. I guess I woke up late. Spike said, hitting his head as Twilight looked at him unconvinced. I don't understand you, Spike. First you fell asleep at the party, then you come home late because of rarity, and now, and now with Scootaloo? I know, I'm really sorry, Twilight. I won't be late again, I promise. Twilight said as she looked at her younger sister. Okay then. Okay. Okay then, Spike. Let's go to bed. I've had a long day. She, she said as her and Spike walked up walked up the stairs and into into her bed. Spike Spike plopped on onto onto his bed, pulling his familiar familiar blankie over him as Twilight shut off the lights with her horn. Good night, Spike. Good night, Twilight. Spike entered the sons filled the room. I don't know. I don't know what her what her reaction is gonna be when she finds out. <laughs> yeah, this will be fun. After a few moments of tossing and turning in his basket, the sleepless dra dragon find it hard to rest. Opening his eyes frequently into into the dark still room, Spike figured he would do something productive. Seeing that it was impossible to go to bed after a brief nap earlier. Spike looked, up, looked over towards Twilight, who was still asleep, and as, as he quietly reached under his bed and pulled out his diary. He had kept the, the small notebook under his bed for years now, but figured it was time for a new entry. He then began writing quietly as the room, as the room was filled with his roommate snoring. Dear Diary, Over the last couple of days, I found out about this cool new thing in Twilight's library. It's called Sex. It's this weird thing that adults do for fun, and for some reason they keep it away from kids. Anyway, I've simple, secretly been doing this for three days now, and I have to say, it feels amazing. There are sorts of things like anal and oral that feels that feels awesome when you when you do it to other mares. So far, I've done it with Scootaloo, Sweetie and Apple Bloom. But I think those days are over because Twilight has been getting pretty suspicious. I think. I think that I'm gonna hold off this sex thing until I'm older. Heck, heck, maybe I could ask if Twilight, Twilight, she would do it with me. Until next time, Spike. <laughs> oh no. Oh, don't do it with Twilight. She's like a sister to you. Well, that's. Well, that was chapter three, all right. <laughs> oh no! Here's this is I see this uh, this comment from from Starcat Five. Next chapter Q four way Q triple pregnancies. Oh, that would suck if they got pregnant. <laughs> and then there's a picture of Rainbow Dash getting a wing boner. And then there was a and then there's a a Twilight. And then there's Twilight. Raised, like growing her eyes wide, and it says, and the meme says, "This is relevant to my interests." Usta. Well, that was, well, that was Spike's curiosity. Well, this will, this will be, 
yeah, this will be my, uh, this will be the, the last video of Spike's Curiosity until Chapter 4's release. So, I don't know, I don't know if Chapter 4 will be the final, would be the, the final, the final chapter, but, but who knows. Alright, since the Kingdom of Crusaders are done with already, well, I can't, can't wait. I can't wait if he's gonna do it to Twilight. I don't even. I think Twilight. I think Twilight would 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 have a total bitch fit if Spike found out found this found out about this. <laughs> but unless the fit unless the fit it's going to chomping the bit territory, it probably should would do it. But well, well, let's let's wait let's wait until the future holds. Oh, and before I sign off, I actually do have some plan, like plans for other videos. My f my friend Parker, he's coming over. He's coming over. He's coming over on Friday, and and we're planning on, and he's and he's gonna plan on doing a reaction to Three Guys One Hammer. Oh my god, he is he is going to he is going to be shocked and surprised about this. And then he, and then he will show me two guys, one horse. Oh, I know, I know one of the guys died. I mean, I just want to, I just want to get over with this mess. And I can't believe, I can't believe in the, in the few years I've known him, I actually, actually watched almost all of the shock videos known to man. We actually at one time did a reaction video to, to one guy, one cup. But unfortunately, it was on my it was on my iPod Nano, and and I accidentally fried it. Yeah, and I'm also gonna I'm also thinking of doing another fanfic reading. It is it is called Attire by Maple Sunset. It's a it's a it's a second person human and Scootaloo plot fic, and and. Yes, I've read it before, and it's it, it's pretty much a it's pretty much a full con, which but which you probably all know what it means. So so yeah, that that's my plan. That's my plans for for that's my plans for the for the weekend. Oh, and if if you had noticed throughout the entire video that my hair is like this, yeah yeah I thought I would, I thought I would, like like look nice for once. Seeing that that my that my other other videos show me with like really unbrushed hair. Well, alrighty then. So alright, this is this is Gunner Jim uh, Gin Rollins two one one. Signing off.